Hello, good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening, madam. Right. Okay. This is after some time, right? <laughs> you had a break, no? <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Your assignments are actually submitted? Yeah, I have submitted. Uh, when is the deadline? Uh, 30th, no? Last ah, right. ah, that is uh, that means everybody uh, uh, might have submitted by now, no? Maybe. Yeah, how did you find it? How did you find it? You could do it well? Don't know. That's uh, after the results only can say, no matter. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Uh, but we can come to a self-estimation, right? You read the notes and you spend some time, you think harder and then uh, did it. Uh, definitely you could have done it right, okay? And a lot of internet materials available. It's not a big issue. The only thing is that your interest, right? You have to read on what I have sent and all. It's all right now. It's gone. It's done and you don't have to say done and dusted anyway, right? Okay. Now, uh, can you actually give me a briefing on what we have already covered? I will tell you. The first day, actually, we discussed what is educational technology. And we learned that everything that is involved in teaching and learning, that is educational technology killer. So then we looked at um, approaches, methods, and techniques. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then after that, we looked at teaching models. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. What are the two teaching models we learned? 5E and 3P. Yeah, PPP model and the 5E model. PPP mm -hmm. model into teacher-centered education and 5E model from the constructivism, the student-centered education. So then after that, um, did we discuss uh, the Bloom's taxonomy and writing specific objectives? Did we discuss? Actually, I have forgotten that. That's what I'm asking you. Last class, you have taught that one, but I was not there for the last class. Yeah. I just go through the record. Right. Then Bloom's taxonomy, all the three domains I have discussed. Because I have forgotten I need your feedback. I'm very sorry. Uh, because I am doing a similar uh, class uh, with my own uh, workplace. Because of that, there's kind of a little bit of confusion in me. Did I discuss Bloom's taxonomy, all the three domains as cognitive, affective, and psychomotor, all the three domains, the levels? Did I discuss or only cognitive domain? I want you to that. We started only cognitive domain. The other two are not discussed. Am I right? Yeah, not yet. Thank you very much, Salma. Right. Okay. Um, uh, today, uh, Channa, Dilini, Afra, uh, Fatima spoke actually, Vidanagis, and then Shamala. There are many. Uh, give me a second, Puta. It's uh, important. Unmute. Okay. Uh, then, uh, cognitive domain, I have discussed the. Please, can you hear me? Yes. Cognitive domain, right. We will be starting with the Bloom's taxonomy. So I have done the cognitive domain. Now, how many domains uh, does he actually discuss when it comes to educational objectives? If not, uh, now each and every lesson that we teach, we teach with a purpose. Right, we teach with a purpose. So your students, uh, what they should be able to do at the end of the lesson, that is we call it uh, specific objectives of the lesson, intended learning outcomes of the lesson. 
So this intended learning outcomes of each and every lesson that you do. Actually, we develop them. We actually uh, formulate intended learning outcomes or specific objectives of the lesson based on Bloom's taxonomy of learning. So according to Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy of learning, uh, how many domains that he discuss? How many domains does he discuss? Three. Sorry? Three types. Three domains. Of Very good. Three domains. What are the three domains we refer to them as? Three H. Each H stands for what? Head, and hand. Very good. Head, hand, and heart. Head, hand, and heart. So whatever the lesson that you do, you may be doing an English lesson, Sinhala lesson, uh, mathematics, maybe sports, whatever, that you have to think of developing the student's 3H. Head, hand, and heart. Head means, give me some other terms for head. Knowledge. Knowledge or cognitive domain. What is it? Knowledge or cognitive domain. domain, right? Uh, heart, attitude, heart. attitudes. Give me Quality. another term. Quality. Feelings, attitudes. Sorry. Quality. Attitudes. Quality. Yeah. Attitudes. Yeah. Attitudes or affective domain. What is it? Affective domain. That means mm. attitudes related. Attitude. Uh, you have to think of outcome attitudes related outcomes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, hand. Give me some other terms for hand. Skills. Skills or psychomotor. What is it? Skills or psychomotor. Oh. So the ability to use equipment, body, in order to perform something, right? In order to perform a task. We'll look at some example. Now, uh, if you teach your students... If you teach your students uh, uses of trees, uses of trees, that is an English lesson or environmental studies lesson. So you teach them uses of trees. That is your particular lesson for grade six. Now, if you are writing specific objectives, that means what will the students be able to do at the end of the lesson? You have to think of the three domains. So what can be the three domain? Cognitive related. They should be able to name five uses of trees. They will be able to state five uses of trees. That is cognitive domain. What is attitude domain? Affective domain. They will accept the importance of. Value of the trees. All ah, right. Importance of preserving trees. They accept it. Very good. What can be the psychomotor? Using hand and equipment and doing something, performing something. They do a small playlet in front of class about uses of trees. Because in student-centered education, just reading it from the book, just listening to the teacher's explanation, right? is just less than 50% of learning and remembering. But if you get them to read that and do and say something, get them to do a small playlet on value of trees, they remember more than 90%. So as a teacher that you will think of these um, methods. So then you get the students based on what they read to do a small playlet on value of trees. That is psychomotor. Are you okay that with that example? Yes, madam. Right. Very good. So then cognitive domain has how many levels? Now we are, we are taking the first domain. Cognitive, head or knowledge related. Okay. Uh, Bloom's actually discuss from simple to complex order. How many levels of cognitive domain? How many levels of cognitive domain? 
levels. How many? Six levels. Six. Very good. Six levels. You can you remember the six levels? Starting with remembering. Yeah. Mm -mm. Understanding. You very good. Apply. Applying. Ana analyze. Analyze. Evaluate. Evaluate and create. Create. Okay. Very good. Uh, then uh, actually everybody is criticizing this. They are overlapping. Right? Um, they are overlapping. They just remember and they just understand. They are they come together. They, they, they happen at the same time. Because of that, now actually educationists, look at these six levels, putting them into two sets. What are those two sets? The bottom three, remembering, understanding and applying. We refer to them as what? Lower order thinking. What is it? Lower order, Lower thinking. order thinking. When analyzing, evaluating and creating those three levels into one set as what? What? Higher order thinking. What is it? Higher order thinking. Are you okay? Can you please repeat it, madam? Yeah, I will. Now, we are still in cognitive domain of Bloom's taxonomy. And mm -hmm. Bloom's tax, I will show you the image. Then it is better understood. Uh, it's worth uh, kind of showing the image. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me a second. Right. How is the weather like? Today is a fine day. Hmm. But here in Colombo, around 5, 6, like it was thundering. I thought, my goodness, I won't be able to do the today's one as well, Kayla. But now it's okay. <sighs> Today also the same, madam. Now okay, right? Yeah. Same here, yeah, madam, during uh, daytime. But now fine. Now fine. Yeah. That is it. Okay, now let me show you Bloom's taxonomy. Okay. Right. Here, uh, I'm going to get you to look at the cognitive domain. Right. And then let me share the screen. Okay. Hello, now hello. here, you can see this now. Okay. The image. Here, you know, initially it was in the noun form. Now it is revised. New domains. Right. But you look at the new, not the original. Because they are using verbs there because it's what the students will be able to do. So it's action-oriented, Nisa. The nouns are uh, transformed into verbs. So remembering, understanding, and applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. If you take these, uh, if you take these, um, If you take this bottom three, remembering, understanding and applying, it's very difficult to distinguish between whether it's remembering or whether it's understanding or whether it's applying. So now the educationists, they take these three levels together and call them lot lower order thinking. Right? And then analyzing, evaluating and creating. These three are taken as one set. And it is termed as hot. Higher order thinking. Ha, very good. Higher order thinking. Higher order thinking. Now, if you are in the primary, maybe that your teaching is limited to lot. Okay? But if you are in secondary school and all that, um, because you all have done Piaget and all that, then, of course, analyzing, creating is also very important. So, for that, uh, first you have to get them to do a lot, develop a lot, and then only that you can get them to go to hot. Because nothing remembered, not understood, they can't actually use them in analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Right? 
in the primary class it may be only lot but in the upper grades from lot to hot you don't have to say lot is not necessary without lot but activities cannot be done. are you okay with the discussion yes madam yeah ma'am yeah okay now knowledge knowledge refers to recall data or information recite a policy quote prices to a customer for example now if you ask them name the part of the body the end of the lesson students be able to name the parts of the body name the parts of the body it is cognitive domain it's what it's knowledge related cognitive domain what level lower order level what is it lower order cut and paste cut apart rote learning am i right are you okay yes madam do they have to analyze the size and think harder and do anything no it's cut and paste because you taught them the five parts of the body now ask you ask them what are the five parts of the body you learn and they can name it it's just cut and paste no thinking is needed just by heart okay so they are lower order they are lower order maybe uh, remember and understand levels okay remember and understand so then comprehension is understanding level understand the meaning translation interpolation and interpretation of instructions so then they can understand what it means if i take you a poem right maybe when they are in the nursery they don't know the meaning they just by heart and this like parrot like they recite but when they come to grade 1 like that action songs that means they know the meaning of it but when they come to higher grades they can actually look at lines uh, similes metaphors um techniques and comparisons and then ultimately they will write poems also that is higher order so i will not take word by word here and before coming to affective domain uh, i will show you actually some examples of uh, uh, give me a second some examples of uh, cognitive domain give me a second to Who's baby? Uh, my one. Your one. How old is he or she? He. he. <laughs> baby boy. Uh, I forgot to mute it. <laughs> it's okay. Hello, madam. Give me a second. Where is it now? New share. And it's just some share. And I'm playing a small video. Teachers or students can hear use to class. Can you hear and see? Yes, madam. If I organize learning objectives, taxonomy is a toolbox. Teachers or students can use to classify and organize learning objectives. Its most popular version is based on the cognitive domain and assumes that learning should be structured from easy to difficult in the following six steps. 1. Remember. 2. Understand. 3. Apply. 4. Analyze. 5. Value. 6. 
create. On the first level, we learn to remember. There is just rote memorization and recollection of facts without much understanding. For example, if we learn about lemons, we want to remember the name, shape, color, size, and they are sour. Once we memorize these essentially meaningless facts, we move to the second level of learning. On level two, we learn to understand. We begin to decode information and learn that a lemon is yellow when it's wheat, and if we take a bite, it's really super sour. We also understand that lemons love sunshine and that contain lots of vitamin C, which is a great natural antioxidant that keeps us healthy. Now, as we really understand a lemon, we can work with it. On the third level, we apply what we know. We've understood that while lemons are sour, they are also a great provider of vitamin C. To apply this knowledge in a meaningful way, we could boil a lemon into hot water and add some honey. Then serve this hot lemon to our sick sister, who's in need of treatment. On the fourth level, we learn to analyze. This involves examining and breaking down information into components, determining how the parts relate to one another, and finding evidence to support generalizations. We study the lemon, examine the skin, and look at levels of vitamins. We can think that we can eat everything inside, while the skin tastes bitter and contains traces of toxic pesticides. It ought not to be consumed. Now we are ready to evaluate. We analyze, critique, and compare. To evaluate our lemon as a good source of vitamins, we compare it to other sources, such as oranges and supplements. We look at the following properties. Vitamin levels, affordability, waste, and packaging waste. If we evaluate our thought critically and without bias, we learn where the lemons score high and where others score higher. Now, after we have learned, understood, applied, analyzed, and evaluated, we are ready to create. As we now really understand lemons, also in comparison to similar things, we can formulate a plan to create our own natural lemonade. It's now easy to come up with a cute shop design, a good name, and a good slogan, natural, healthy, yummy. Bloom's Taxonomy was first created in 1946 by American psychologist Benjamin Bloom. The revised version from 2001, as just presented, serves as the backbone of many teaching philosophies, in particular those that aim towards teaching specific skills. Each level usually comes with a clear learning objective that can be tested. Critics of the taxonomy often question the existence of a sequential, hierarchical link between each level. What are your thoughts? Please share them in the comments below. Right. Oh, that is what we discuss. Another example you saw. That is education actually strive towards that. Just by heart, go and sit for exams and get A's and B's and then go to university. But no critical thinking is developed that the knowledge is for the sake of knowledge only. You understand. But gone are the days. Now you can see how we can actually get the learner to actually move towards the ladder in their thinking, in their cognition. Are you okay? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Right, okay. So then uh, I will be actually uh, showing you another document uh, where you can see some... No, I have to finish the rest of it as well. So the rest of it is the other two domains, okay? Uh, uh, can you see the word document? Other two domains we will discuss and then here now the effective domain. It is not discussed, am I right? Yeah, yeah, so now we are going to look at that Bloom's taxonomy, the second domain.
because in each and every lesson that you have to think of affective domain. Affective means attitudes or heart related. So always that you have to get them to develop their attitudes. If they don't develop correct attitudes, then what's the point of knowledge, right? What's the point of knowledge? Now, uh, they know uh, the uses of trees, but they have not developed or inculcated, they have not got any attitudes related to um, uh, trees developed. So they go on destroying uh, trees, cut felling trees for black money and all that. What's the purpose, right? Because of that, each and every lesson, at least one learning outcome related to affective domain is very, very important, right? So we'll see. Now, affective means attitudes. Uh, that means heart-related. So you have to actually write uh, lesson objectives uh, for each and every lesson, uh, which is referring to affective domain. At the end of the lesson, the students will be able to get that, have that attitude, okay? The correct attitude is developing there. So the affective domain includes the manner in which we deal with things emotionally such as feelings, values, appreciation, enthusiasm, motivation, and attitude. Now, you all are going to be teachers, right? You all are going to be teachers. Now, you come to my lectures. So, you learn all the methods, all the approaches, all psychological concepts and all that. That is knowledge, right? That is knowledge related. But... If you are have if you don't have that attitude, uh, I have to work hard, I have to plan my lessons, I have to actually deal with my students this way, I have to facilitate like this, and I need to do it in my class uh, to facilitate learning of my students, then only the attitudes have been developed. Am I right? Then only the attitudes have been developed. Uh, but most of the time, we know they, we, they have knowledge, but attitudes are not developed. So teachers are supposed to actually get them to develop attitudes. When you teach a lesson, it's not only knowledge, but attitudes also should be given to your students. So what are the levels of these attitudes? Like cognitive domain, affective domain also has levels. Let's see whether I have an image. Uh, no. These are the levels. You can say you can put it into a period. Uh, first level is receiving phenomena. What is the first level? Receiving, receiving phenomena. Right? Awareness, willingness to hear, selected attention. Now, you in the lesson, you tell them, Trees have lots of uses. They do a lot of things. So we should not actually harm them. We should not destroy them. That is receiving phenomena. Awareness is there. They like to listen to it and all that. Okay. Responding to phenomena. First one is receiving the phenomena. Then responding to phenomena. Active participation on the part of the learners attends and reacts to a particular phenomenon. Can I give you an example? Sometimes the teachers in schools, they get the students to actually have some vegetable plots and you have one period allocated for actually tending it and all that. So you get them to actually respond to that phenomena of safeguarding, protecting trees and seeing the value of it. So that is responding to the phenomena. Receiving, then responding. And then valuing. The worth of value person attached to a particular object phenomena. How much value that you give to it. That concept. Okay. Just because you are made to do that, you are doing it, but you are not valuing it. But once you actually are, I will talk to you about it with another example. Right? Valuing. And then organization. Organization values into priorities by contrasting different values, right? And then internalize it. Has a value system that controls their behavior. So how many levels we discuss when it comes to the affective domain, Puta? How many levels? Five. Five. How many levels? Five. What are they? 
receiving, responding, valuing, and then organization and internalizing. Can you repeat? Can you repeat? Receiving. Then after that? Responding. Responding. After responding? Valuing. After valuing? valuing organization and organization after that internalizing now without looking at this uh, example can i give you my own experience as an adult oh. right as an adult you know i live in a i live in an apartment right i live in an apartment so this is this happened about uh, 10 years ago right 10 years back like uh I was not in the habit of actually uh, separating uh, garbage. I was not in the habit of separating garbage. Then, of course, uh, they put a kind of rule here. Uh, if you don't separate garbage, that your garbage is not taken. <laughs> right? Are you listening? Yes. Yeah. Same thing happened to you also. Yes, madam. Yeah. Then receive phenomenon is what? I made to separate the garbage. No. Mm -hmm. I must to separate the garbage into bins. Okay. Three mm -hmm. bins. Paper like that. Food waste like that. Then whether I like it or not, I had to respond. Otherwise, my garbage is not taken. So, responding to the phenomena. Kankuru, Kankuru Gaga, all the time I was nagging, but I did that. So, I was responding to it. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then, after some time, I started valuing it. Why? I saw how good it is and how it, how neat it is. And then I learned uh, uh, when it comes to plastic and polythene, I'm using a lot of plastic and polythene because piled up like nothing so i saw a lot of things and i started valuing this uh, separating them then i saw these garbage collectors they find it very easy um uh, so i started thinking a lot of actually good in it and then i started valuing it it's good to do it's worth doing it's some right right and then later what happened i became more organized I actually uh, minimize my use of plastic and polythene. Whenever I want to buy something from the supermarket and all that I use to bring my uh, cloth bags because I thought I'm overusing polythene and plastics and all like that. I became very much organized. And I know then uh, every day I have actually um, uh, remove only the food waste. The rest, of course, every uh, um, once in three days like that. I became very much organized in that, and then I enjoy doing it. Okay, then I enjoy means I let I take pride in doing that. I take pride in doing that, and then internalizing. Then I can actually be very proud, and it's there in me. I'm actually not to put garbage everywhere. It's very nicely and disposal of garbage is something very important and it should be practiced. That is my actually mind about garbage disposal. So it did not happen overnight. So in the class also, when you want to give your students good attitudes, it will not, you cannot do it in one lesson overnight. At the end of the lesson, they will not get these attitudes in them. But in the class, what can you do that? What can you do? You can actually get them to receive and respond to phenomena. Am I right? Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Am I connected? Yes, ma'am. Right. If you don't respond, I think that I'm not connected. You're not there. Like no, in now, when it comes to attitudes, not like cognitive domain. Cognitive domain, you have to get them to actually learn it at the end of the lesson. 
right? But attitudes, of course, that you can't do that. So you can cater to the first levels, receiving and responding. Now, for example, another example, you teach them an English lesson. In that English lesson, uh, they actually um, listen to a poem about a caged bird, about a caged bird, Maya Angelou's caged bird. It's about not a caged bird. It's about freedom, right? But anyway, now you get them to listen to that poem. So then you can actually get them to look at poetic devices, the subject in it, the techniques used and the theme and all that. They are all cognitive domain. But what kind of, what can be the attitude uh, related one? We should treat everyone alike. We should not actually um, curtail anybody's freedom. People like freedom, not animals like freedom, people like freedom. So that kind of phenomena that you can tell them. So they are receiving that phenomena. Respect others' freedom, right? And then responding to that phenomena, maybe that you get them to um, uh, 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 kind of, uh, you can get them to actually maintain a book where, or get them to write something about uh, freedom and all that. So you can cater to receiving and responding, but the rest of it, valuing it, organization and internalizing will not happen on the same day. It will take some time uh, for them to actually come to these highest, le higher levels of affective domain. Do you understand what I'm telling? Yes, I want you to respond. Do you understand what I'm telling? Yeah, ma'am. Others, there are some others also, they are very quiet today. But I'm only boy, Channa. Yeah, ma'am. Can you hear me? Oh, right, right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm listening. Right, okay. So you understand this? Yeah, ma'am. I understand. Right. So I will give you a small activity now. We have about 10, at least five of you can actually think of a lesson of your choice. Maybe science, maths or English or whatever, sports or whatever. Right? Think of a lesson. And uh, give me the topic and tell me what kind of attitudes that you can actually get them to receive and value. Maybe uh, first two levels, not value even. Uh, receive and respond. As I gave you that example of uses of trees or cage bird by my angle. Yes, Can you? It's simple. Don't think in a very big manner. Just simple way you think. Okay. Anybody? No. At least one of you can give me give it a try. We have 12 people in the meeting. There's a message in the chat. Ma'am, I have a problem with my connection. I don't know why it is. I lost my connection also. Try to fix it, Shamala. Shama, Shamala. Try to fix it, dear. Okay. No example? Huh? 
ಅಯ್ಯೋ ನಾವು ಟೇಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೆಸನ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ನಾವು ವಿ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ the knowledge may be that you know there are two main approaches you know there are methods uh, teacher center student center advanced and there are tech you can use that is knowledge related but attitude related may be that uh, receiving and responding um the teacher trainees the students the big students will accept the importance of using appropriate methods and techniques in the class to facilitate learning to students that learning so that is a value related one even if you know your approach methods and all that if you don't use them so affect domain may be the students at the end of the lesson the students will value students value the importance of or students value the importance of using appropriate um methods and techniques in the class to promote learn so how can you get them to do that uh, you can get them to do it now in the class that you have to actually write this is a mock teaching session so i want you to conduct i want you to write list uh, specific objectives they are the affective domain and what are you putting them to what what do you get the what how do you get them to actually have that attitude in them uh, so you get them to actually uh 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 write reflective notes so teach trainees they go and teach and then write reflective notes and then they say i actually could get them to get my students to uh, value the importance of predicting trees today i like that for that i got them to actually uh, uh, write uh, do a small playlet on uh, kind of a dessert uh, concrete worlds and all that so they came up and did that so then they get the value values in calculated in there so you can actually think of uh, transforming each and every knowledge related lessons into a value education lesson as well so the levels are receiving responding valuing organization and internalization right and here the example here look at this a receiving phenomena awareness willingness to hear seated attention examples listen to others with respect listen for and remember the name of newly introduced people ask chooses describes the keywords right responding to phenomena active participation on part of the learners attends and reacts to a particular phenomenon learning outcomes i think this is not very clear what i gave you as an example is very clear i gave you my own experience of garbage disposal and then uh, uh, from the classroom the uses of trays and all that okay uh is it okay for you hello you have to respond <laughs> hello yes ma'am it's fine yes ma'am yeah psychomotor domain that means hand or skills related okay the simson is very uh, uh kind of known uh, very well known educationist who actually did lot of research on the application of bloom's taxonomy right simson so the psychomotor domain includes physical movement coordination coordination of body parts eye hand coordination and all that and use of motor skills areas motor skills in young learners and all that now when it comes to grade 1 students right holding the pencil and forming letters is psychomotor but in grade 4 or 5 it is not a psychomotor one because it's automatic 
right? It's automatic. They are supposed to do that. So you don't have to say write letters. Are forming letters in grade one is psychomotor, okay? And includes physical movement, coordination, use of motor skills, and use of equipment as well. Tools, equipment to perform something, to do something. Development of these skills requires practice and is measured in terms of speed, precision, distance, procedures, or techniques in execution. I repeat, uh, skills are measured in terms of speed, precision, distance, procedures, or techniques in execution. The seven major categories are listed from the simplest behave to the most complex. So the psychomotor domain also has levels. What is the first level? Perception. What is the first level? Perception. Your dancing teacher actually does a beautiful one number. She's doing a beautiful one number and you're perceiving it. The ability to use sensory cues to guide motor activity. You observe, right? And perception. Perception means how to do kele balagani normally. Perceive it. And then set. Set is readiness to act. It includes mental, physical and emotional sets. These three sets are dispositions that predetermine a person's response to different situations. So then once perceived, now you are ready to actually act it. But it's more or less copying, no? more or less copying. The exact thing that you see that you are trying to do it. You are set ready. Guided response. The early stages in learning a complex skill that includes imitation and trial and error. Adequacy of performance is achieved by practicing. Guided response means your teacher comes and say, ah, you can put your feet like this, your hands like this and all that. And you guide them in doing that. Suppose now you're getting them to actually make a uh, fruit salad. It is also psychomotor, right? They have to use their body parts, tools and all that. Perception means that you should how to actually do it. Walking fruits and cutting them into pieces and all that you demonstrate. And then the students feel like that I also want to do this. They are mentally, physically and emotionally ready now to perform the act. Now you tell them, guided response. First wash all the fruits. And then peel them. And then put them into separate dishes. And then cut them into pieces. When it comes to pineapple, you cut it into small pieces. But bananas into slices. Like that, you give them guidance. So the guided response is they are minimizing trial, minimizing errors. Right? And then mechanism. Mechanism is this is the intermediate stage in learning. Like skill learned responses have become habitual and the movements can be performed with some confidence and proficiency. Now, once it is practiced a lot, you know your students do not need any guidance, any uh, kind of instructions. Now they can their own make a fruit salad. And later on, my goodness, they actually don't have to actually take time. They automatically do it. That is termed as mechanism. They know the mechanism, right? And if you know the mechanism, complex overt response, that means you're not going to perform the task as it is, as you have learned it. Instead, you will actually try new things based on that. Now, for example, as I told you, you want to actually do a lesson using 5 model or do a lesson using PPP model. But later on, when you master it, you really don't have to stick to 5e or PPP. Instead, you can go eclectic. That is, mix elements, draw it from here and there and do your lesson as you wish. It's a new, very creative uh, one, right? That is the complex overt response.
at my point dear then adaptation skills are well developed and the individual can modify so here complex of response that is the last one i explain the skillful performance of motor acts that involves complex movement patterns that means now the the exact thing that you learned in a very skillful manner perfect and then only the adaptation you can add you can change and adopt and all that right all these things can happen so how many levels there six what are the six levels of the psychomotor domain perception set guided response mechanism mm -hmm. and then complex mm -hmm. overt response mm -hmm. and then adaptation mm -hmm. so when it comes to adaptation that as i told you now your ability to use the 5e model right first it will be as it is right later on you're very thorough with the 5e model and you're not doing any changes you stick to the original but perfectly done but later on you will think of actually your own model you will not actually be, go strictly or you will not adhere strictly to 5e you can do changes and make your lesson better and more effective that is it in the class also that is how um uh psychomotor at development may take place right now for example you get your students to do presentations right when when it is for the first time they are doing a presentation they will do it at very superficial level and you know uh, as the teacher asks them to do very primitive right they perceive how the others do how the teacher does and then now they are mentally ready for that then teacher guides them in doing it and then they know how the mechanism of it how to do a presentation the uh, introduction the body the conclusion and the question answers like that and then complex they are now perfectly doing it without any errors but later on adaptation may be that they use music in presentation they use uh, animations in presentations uh, they don't actually start with the introduction instead that they start with uh, some anecdotal and then go to the introduction of the topic and all that they are very confident so they can actually easily they are very confident in doing changes but not losing any uh, losing the essence of it so you know normally the presentation starts with an introduction but when you're very confident right you're at adaptation level of the psychomotor skills what happens that you will start with an anecdotal and then introduce your topic right that can be done so that you're deviating scientifically deviating from the set patterns that is the highest level of psychomotor skills your ability to do something uh, in a different way that is what is needed actually speaking now gajaga vannama right you are a dancing teacher so you get you demonstrate it your students perceive it then your students are ready, now mentally ready to do the gajaga vannama and then exactly as you said now they know how to do that what is the first part what is the second part what is the third part and all that and they are perfect in doing that and one fine day that they will actually create a new version of gajaga vannama i have seen now that is how this um uh, channa vijayavardhana and all that they have come to that level because they have gone that far right it's not the exactly that traditional dance that they bring on stage so that comes with lots of practice and experience then one fine day that you can go there adapt it are you okay yes so now Uh, did i show you the bloom's deal that day did i show you the bloom's action verb be
respond 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 dears did i show you the bloom's action verb wheel that day yeah ma yeah so now you can see the may screen that i'm sharing yeah so here actually when i was a residential teacher at nie mahalagawa right long time back i think almost 30 years now right i also started my career as a teacher so it's residential anyway in this educational technology or teaching methodology module so we had this bloom's taxonomy you know we were supposed to do a wheel bloom's action verb wheel and keep it on our desk in our rooms right and then you know we have to write lesson plans now always we are supposed to look at the bloom's action verb wheel and select the proper word for each and every specific objective that we write so here if you take bloom's taxonomy from remember understand apply so some verbs are for remember define duplicate list memorize repeat understand classify describe discuss explain identify report select translate so your students will do them so it's action oriented right your students will do these they can describe they will report they will select so apply execute implement solve use demonstrate interpret schedule sketch so differentiate it's this level so you can actually go as lot and hot i don't say that you can don't have to think of each and every level go as lot and hot right that is a practical way excuse me ma'am yeah are you in a new screen you are uh, still in the previous one i see yes i'm, I'm in one okay i'm in a new one i think this is the one okay this is one uh, i'm using right so i have sent them but this is of course something that i can't actually teach overnight so this is introduction only so when you are actually writing lesson plans when you go to a school when you teach you have to dabble with these things so i'm writing a lesson plan so i have to write specific objectives so i have to actually cater to bloom's cognitive domain at least one from effective one from psychomotor so how to write them so research and you go to resource actually you can see whether there is a proper um, kind of uh, um, uh, what what kind of verbs we used and all that you can see now here i'm sharing that also. now here this is another one. Did I speak to you about the smart objectives? I have a slight memory. Actually, I have got mixed it up. Whether I have done it in my campus or whether I have done it with the all kill, that's it's a mix up. That's why I'm asking. Did I talk to you about the smart objectives? No, ma'am. No, no, right. Okay. The next step will be writing smart objectives then. Uh, so internet is very slow. Let's give it time. Now, this you might think amma very difficult and all that. Don't take it as difficult. Actually speaking, if you speak to any teacher, right? This is a bit confused here. Yeah actually confusing but you know these basics you have to try doing them and uh, one fine day that you get to know what it is like so it's not the very first day itself that you have to be 100 percent accurate that won't happen with anybody okay that's the very nature of this now here blooms taxonomy action verbs and activities yeah if you want to look at the lot 
can you see this diagram i'm showing loops taxonomy action verbs and activities yes yeah so here that you can actually search online also so these remember understand and apply these are the lot ver action verbs define list recall identify match classify explain organize prepare rearrange solve use they are all lower order then go to higher order analyze evaluate and create categorize classify criticize compare contrast construct produce formulate design develop they are lower or higher order so you can actually refer to a bloom's wheel so if you if i don't ask you to do that why don't you prepare a bloom's wheel and keep it on your desk you will get that actually uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, that is it's something that is a must in the teacher's favor on the teacher's favor right and then what are the kind of activities that you can give remembering nang lecture visual video audio examples illustrations and analogies understand questions discussions review test assessments reports learn a presentation write apply practice exercises now for example you you are an english teacher you taught them uh, simple present tense right you taught them simple present tense so you can ask them to actually talk about their daily routine using simple present tense it's application it's application right okay and then analyze what you the test questions discussions case studies exercises and problems and evaluate debates critiques appraisals simulations case studies problems projects create construct projects creative exercises develop plans and all that so you can see the activity types also there are big projects there are big um, kind of uh, debates uh, like in a debate that you argue right uh, you discuss uh, you give feedback you are creative in doing something all these are higher order so the activities these are all cognitive to me okay so uh, i think uh, that in the note i have sent for the other two also i have given you some verbs but you can actually look at it when it comes to psychomotor when it comes to um uh, attitudes affective domain it's the first level levels um, higher order levels actually the big levels at the high end they will not be actually doing it in the class itself on the particular day itself that they will not be able to achieve them they take time but cognitive domain at the end of the lesson that they should will be able to do that they will be able to do that that is also a difference that you should keep in mind okay right now um did i speak to you about writing smart objectives i need your help papa i want i always like to hear your voices can't you talk madam yeah we didn't study did i talk to you about smart objectives no not yet so our next part will be uh writing smart objectives right writing smart objectives so for that let me open right i'm sharing this slide now now we are still in what we are still in which topic can you tell me we discussed bloom's taxonomy the three domains and its levels under a topic what is that topic
writing specific objectives of a lesson. What is the topic? Writing specific objectives of a lesson. Yeah, under that we first discuss Bloom's taxonomy. Right? And the action verbs. Now, second point under writing specific objectives is making your specific objectives smart. What is it? Making your specific objectives smart. Smart actually stands for smart is an acronym. Smart is an acronym. It stands for this. You always have to write specific objectives. SMART. SMART is the acronym. So SMART stand, it stands for what? SMART, smart name. Smart. I'm very sorry. Specific. This is wrong, uh -huh. right? Specific. It's for specific. What is it? Specific. 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 M for? Measurable. Measurable. Very good. A for? Yeah. Action bound. Action oriented. R for realistic or reasonable. Realistic. T for time bound. So always when you are writing specific objectives, thing is you have to relate to the Bloom's taxonomy and its levels, domains and levels. Second thing, you have to write smart objectives. SMART is an acronym and S for specific, M for measurable, A for action bound, R for realistic or reasonable and T time bound. So let me explain it further, right? Let me explain it further. Specific, S for specific. Specific means that the learning objectives describe the knowledge, attitudes or skills that a learner should be able to demonstrate following exposure to a teaching strategy or learning activity. Can I act once your lesson is done, right? What will they be able to do? You have to make it very specific. So for example, if you say uh, they will be able to talk about trees, they will be able to talk about trees. Is it specific? No. What about trees? Is it about the parts of the tree? Is it about the functions of the parts of about the tree? Is it about the variety of trees? Uh, different types of trees? Is it about uh, the uses of trees? Like that. It's not very specific. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. It's all about just yeah. information. So really, yeah, very good. If you really want to actually make it specific, uh, you have to look at that particular lesson. In that particular lesson, your students will be able to state uses of trees. State uses of trees. Then it is specific. If not, that lesson is about parts of the tree. So you, the students will be able to name or label the parts of the tree. Then if not, they will be able to talk about trees. They will be able, able to um, write about trees. That is very broad. It doesn't give any meaning. But you have to make it very specific, very specifically what they will be able to do. You have to tell. That is one example that I gave, right? Okay. Now, for example, if you say it's an English lesson. So it's a grade six um, reading passage. So if you say at the end of the lesson, students will be able to read the passage and understand it. It's very broad, actually speaking. How can you make it very... What happened? Maybe yeah, yeah, wait for ma'am. Yeah. Something wrong.
right. I'm sorry. It's a connection issue. I'm back, right? Are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. And, uh, and you know, uh, this time we have only two hour sessions, right? It's not a three hour session today. It's only a two hour session from 7.30 to 9.30. Okay, you saw okay. that in the time, right? Yeah. Okay. Now here, I was talking to you about making it specific. Now, if you say they will read and understand the passage, it's very broad. But if you say that they, the students will be able to scan for specific information, that is the special type of reading that you want your students to do. Scan for specific information. So you give them a dictionary page. So you give them some difficult words for them to look at pronunciation and meaning. So they will not read the whole dictionary from A to Z. Instead that they actually scan it. They go to S, they go to SA, they go to SAP like that. And then they go to pronunciation that is given within the slanted lines. Uh, then they look at the meaning and all that. So they are actually scanning strategy. So in this particular lesson, the students will be able to scan for specific information. So you're going to make it specific, not broad or general. Hope it is understood. Am I right? As much as possible, let me make it very specific. Are you okay? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Can I give you another yes. example now? Suppose you're teaching them yeah. simple yeah, yeah, you're teaching them it's simple present. Uh-huh. Sorry. Yeah, ma'am. It's good if you can give another example. You know, this example, can. right. So, okay, yeah. very good. So I I like to hear your voices. Okay, then I know that you're connected and all that. No, right, very good. I'll give you another example. Then you have to think of another example also, right? I will give you another example that is also from English language. Okay, right. Uh it is a grammar lesson. You all know simple present tense. You all know simple present tense. But when it comes to simple present tense, you know, positive, negative, um, interrogative, active voice, passive voice, all these are there. So if you tell at the end of the lesson, it's only 40 minute lesson. So if you tell at the end of the lesson, students will be able to uh, use simple present tense in communication. It is very broad. Because which aspect of simple present tense? Uh, you, you can say at the end of the lesson, students will be able to form active voice simple present tense verbs. Students will be able to form Active voice, simple present tense verbs. If it is only positives that you are teaching on in that on that particular day, you have to say simple present tense, positive, active voice verbs. It's only forming verbs, right? You are not going to get them to write sentences using simple present tense. Instead, so in that particular lesson, you get them to give blanks, that the blank and the base form of the verb. So, Sheena speaks. Hina speaks. Dena speak. So, you get them to form only. So, you are very specific. If not that you teach only active voice, simple present tense, positives. Whether to use S form or the base form. But if you actually write the specific objectives, like students will be able to use simple present tense. That is very wrong. Because it's very broad. It's not very specific. Is it okay? Yeah, ma'am. Right. Now it's your turn. Can one or two of you think of a specific objectives? To talk about that, you can say the broad one and the specific one as well. You can give it a try. Right or wrong, it's okay. I can correct you if you're wrong. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, if students uh, 
will be able to then uh, we'll think like this uh, we teach passive voice we take the lesson uh, then passive voice present perfect tense then students learn and they can uh, understand that tense and they can uh, fill in the blanks and they can identify the uh, passive voice uh, that present perfect tense that is broad and specific mean uh, if there is a practical thing example accident they want to give a report to the police if the students can explain or the uh, explain that situation using that uh, person perfect tense or passive voice uh, the man has been uh, ha has been killed like that uh, i think that is specific they can use it into practical definitely yes that you can state like that yeah at the end of the lesson students will be able to use present perfect passive sentences in describing an accident am i right or reporting an accident am i right yeah yes ma'am very good it's very specific because you can use the passive present perfect structure for any other things as well and whether it's speaking or writing, you are going to specify which type of writing is done that particular time in that particular period of the day. So that is very specific. Very good, Chana. So any other example from you? Any other example? No. Silence is killing. You all are becoming silent killers. <laughs> I always feel like that. I don't know. When people are silent. Oh. <laughs> right. Go to the next. Right. It's for specific. Then... M for measurable. You have to write your specific objectives of the lesson and you have to make sure that they are measurable. So measurable means that achievement of learning objectives can be measured by test items, observation, problem solving exercises or other evaluation methods during or after the session. Measure karanga there. So many cognitive domain, na, they should be measurable. Uh, values and psychomotor skills of course as I told you it's not overnight not at the end of the lesson no. so keep it aside but cognitive domain specific objectives that you have to make them measurable so how can you make them measurable you have to use an action verb for that what is it you have to use an action verb uh, they are overlapping measurable action oriented so how can it be measurable? So if you get them to label the parts of the tree, you can measure it because they can perform the task and you can see that. Am I right? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. So they are overlapping. Measurable and action-oriented is overlapping. Action-oriented, that means you have to use an action verb, action-bound. Action bound means that the objective includes an action verb that demonstrate the change or acquisition of knowledge, attitude, or behaviors. So that is why you know, we looked at Bloom's uh, I mean, action wheel. So always the student's action, what the students should do, should be able to do, Kianeka. So label, name, compare, design, um, demonstrate, identify, um, Give me some other words what the students will be able to do, Kela. Write, uh, um, uh, underline. underline, match, uh, uh, name, uh, like that. You have to use an action verb. That is student's action, right? Once you make it action bound, it becomes measurable because students perform an action Then you can see, observe. You can give them a test item and get them to do something, do the sums. And then you can actually see whether it is actually learned or not. 
right? Whether it's learnt or not. So measurable and action bound, they go together always. What the students will be able to do, an action verb should be there, appropriate levels. So for that, you have to uh, refer to the Bloom's taxonomy. But anyway, there's an action verb. So because of that, if you use the word learn, students will learn. Students will understand. Can you measure it? Students will learn. Mm -hmm. Students will understand. Can you measure it? Can you measure it? No, because there's no action performed by the students. There's no action performed by the students. Student understand you are making action. Students learn you are. There's no particular action that they are performing. So it's not action bound. So you can't use words like understand, learn and all that. Instead, you have to say name, um, write, uh, uh, match, label, compare, right? identify, explain, discuss like that. You have to actually use an action verb, that action done by the students, right? You can see that action done by the student, then it becomes measurable, okay? And then the reasonable or realistic. So be fair and reasonable. You can't expect miracles in the class, right? So it's a 40-minute lesson. And it is a kind of a geography, uh, environmental studies lesson. It's about uses of trees. And in that lesson that you talk about 10 uses of trees. So you have to make sure that it is 10 kilo kilo. You don't have to say that the students actually state uses of trees. Instead, you can say students state 10 uses of trees. Then it is reasonable. This is realistic. What they learn, you know how much, how many reasons that you taught them. So that is what is expected from them to, uh, 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 expected for them to learn. So then you are making it reasonable and realistic, okay? And then time bound. Time bound means when they will be able to do that. At the end of the lesson, at the end of the session, at the end of the unit, at the end of the program. But as you are writing specific objectives for the each and every for each and every lesson, so normally you have to write at the end of the lesson. So when they will be able to do that, time bound at the end of the lesson. So example of smart objectives. Can you read what is given here? The first one. Ma'am, it still is not, not visible, I think. Can others huh? see? No, there's no, it's not visible. Uh -huh. yeah, ma yes, that yeah. is. Now? Yeah, not yet, ma'am. Please share. Yeah. I see. But you didn't see the apparat in here. You could have told me. Yeah, I was thinking, but I thought maybe stick here. Okay. <laughs> One second. I was actually all the time here. Examples of smart objectives. Can you read? First one. Following this session, time bound, participants will describe action oriented six factors specific, measurable, reasonable that contribute to the increase of global warming. Right. This is an example of smart objectives. Maybe this is a lesson on global warming. But how it is written, making it smart, following the session, that means at the end of the session, so time bound. Participants will describe. Describe is the action verb, action oriented. Six factors, six kiwagama, specific, measurable and reasonable. Right, actually speaking, specific Specific you can put here. 
right? Specific, right? So six factors, reasonable and measurable. So you know it's only six factors, okay? That contribute to the increase of global warming. It's not about global warming. What is it? Contribute to the increase of global warming. So see how specific it is. So that is the way that you have to write smart objectives for each and every lesson. But mind you, you don't actually have to think of right. I you I have to master it overnight. Next day I will be able to write smart objectives perfectly. That won't happen. That actually happens with actually experience. That means you keep on writing, writing, writing your lesson plans with the smart objectives in it. You will master it. It takes time. And at the same time, when you're writing specific objectives initially, you have to do a lot of resourcing. You have to actually refer to the teacher's guides. You have to refer to other internet stuff. You have to refer to the Bloom's wheel, action verbs. Like that, you have to do a lot of resourcing and do that. So, which is time consuming and difficult. But once you do it continuously for some time, you will get the knack of it. It won't happen overnight. So, don't get disappointed if you don't master it overnight. Okay? Right. So, can you read the second one in red? At the end of the lesson, time bound. Students will be able to form simple present passive verbs, construct sentences in simple present passive. Yeah, there are two specific objectives. What is the first one? Form simple present passive verb. So maybe the first activity is to form the passive verb only. They are not going to write sentences. So once you give them enough practice in forming the verb, maybe through filling the blank and all that, you get them to construct sentences in simple present passive. And as uh, Channa said, I think we can actually make it very specific. And simple present passive, uh, when do we use simple present tense passive? Normally in in talking about a process of doing something. Process, uh, when we discuss about man, uh, the things happen usually. And... Also, we use simple passive for uh, future ideas also, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, example, uh, development activities uh, is started like that. And yeah. will we speak yeah. louder? Yeah, ma'am. Uh, simple present tense in passive is used for uh, daily to express the daily thing, usually uh, done things. And uh, if something no, is happening... No, no. Normally, the daily routine, we don't use the passive, no? Uh, we normally yeah, yeah, use passive. active voice for the daily yeah, routine, yeah, right? Yeah. We can't say uh, teeth or brush. Yeah, time. it's very odd yeah. if you use yeah, like yeah. Uh, teeth, teeth <laughs> yeah. or brush, uh, face, yeah. it's washed. Washed, no, no, yeah. No, 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 no. It's odd, yeah. Ma you don't. Normally, yeah. for a process, you know, how yeah, but, is made. Uh, yeah. Where the doer is actually not important or less important. How the tea is made. The process of yeah. making tea. Ah, yes. Uh, tea leaves are plucked. Tea leaves mm. are separated and dried like that. So you can say the students will be able to use simple present passive verbs in describing a process. Am I right? Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. So something yeah. like that. So, right. Okay. Others also understand the silent killers? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I know. Mama Hamad, this is wage. You don't have to worry. Ammo, this is very difficult. This is weak to me and all that. It is actually true to everyone when they learn this for first time. Okay. Later yeah. on, when you start working with that and doing it and by referring to books and other stuff, you will actually learn it gradually, little by little, and ultimately that you will master it, right? And even today, 
right? These days that I'm into curriculum development. So we have to write objectives for the curriculum, the whole program, not for specific lessons, but for the whole program. My goodness, we have a team. Though we discuss, till we have doubts, right? So that is how it is, right? So you have to keep on doing. Uh, then we come to the next one. Uh, let me take you to the next uh, slide. Right. Now, categories of Bloom's taxonomy, I, we have discussed it, okay? I have discussed it enough. Um, here, knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, I have given you some um, action verbs from the wheel. These are some, right? I actually like you all can actually uh, prepare your own visual aid, a big action verb wheel uh, by referring to the materials available, your own one. Because there are three domains, no? So you can actually spin the wheel, right? When you want to actually go to effective domain, that you will get that effective domain once. When you want to go for the cognitive domain, you get the cognitive domain once. By spinning it, you can get that. Likewise, you can make very creative, very useful action verb um, wheel that you can have it on your table. That will make you to uh, keep, uh, that will keep you reminded of the importance of writing specific objectives and all that as well. Okay. So, this is I have discussed in a form. This is also discussed. This is the Bloom's Taxonomy 1 version, right? Um, Right, okay, that is enough. We have discussed it enough. Now, uh, can you give me the summary of what I discussed today before moving on to the next point? Can I get you to give me the summary of what I discussed today? Yeah, madam, we have discussed the Bloom's taxonomy in that we have discussed about three domains. And the level. Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Okay. So they are cognitive and effective psychomotor. And we have discussed mm -hmm. about cognitive domain. And later we have uh, discussed the uh, origin of domain. That, that is uh, lower order thinking and the higher order thinking. Um, yeah. After that, uh, we have briefly discussed about two things and later uh, uh, effective domain. That means that we have discussed about the three H's also. Um, yeah. That is uh, head, heart, uh, hand and effective mm. domain means the attitude and the uh, it's about heart. So we have uh, discussed the category and we have told some examples that uh, put in garbage, that one. And after that, um, yeah, um, psychomotor domain. And uh, I have missed one thing lastly. Um, what is that? Uh, before. Making specific objective smart. There's so no. Please, colleagues, please help me. Uh, what is it? Yeah, I have forgot. I have missed that one. Psychomotor domain. You talk about psychomotor domain, right? Uh, yeah. Psychomotor yeah, after domain. The psychomotor domain. Domain. Actually, the Bloom's yeah. wheel. We discussed the Bloom's wheel. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, um, you are not well, darling. Yeah, madam. <laughs> I you have cold. a running nose. Yeah. Cold. Uh, but still, you are an active participant in my class. I'm glad. Thanks. You saw a doctor? No, today onwards. Start. Um, mm. I will give you a home remedy. What is that home <laughs> remedy for cold? Coriander seeds? Plus, anywhere. Uh -huh. Boil them and drink. 
ஒரு <laughs> know the theory know the concept and keep on trying okay that is the kind of uh, way then we have to actually look at lesson uh, plan lesson planning uh, this uh, specific objectives is also a component of lesson plan so i will actually talk about lesson planning before that there are 12 of you in the class 11 of you with me no 12 so 11 of you or 10 of you maybe the institution is also there na so because of that there are 10 of you so i want this is actually very important homework is homework are you ready take down your homework okay yes, ma'am ma right everyone should do because we are meeting again only next wednesday right so you have time right then this is what you can do you can actually think of a small part of a lesson and you can give it a try uh to write five specific objectives how many specific objectives five five, five. and uh, two or three cognitive domain two or three cognitive domain one affective one psychomotor one affective one psychomotor right i will give you an example the parts of a tree for the grade 4 students so cognitive domain may be at the end of the lesson students will be able to name seven parts of a tree seven parts of a tree and then second one at the end of the lesson students will be able to clouding stem ek athena ani uh state three functions of each part of a tree three functions of each part of tree okay so they are the two cognitive domain right and then affective domain uh students will be able to kela dala thiyena value the importance of uh Now, if not you can say students will be able to explain the importance of uh different parts of trees for photosynthesis am i right hmm that is also cognitive anyway right that is also cognitive then affective domain would be students will be able students will enjoy uh talking about trees and its value students will enjoy talking about trees and it is its functions right and if not you can say students will uh uh they will participate enthusiastically in group work that is also an attitude right uh participation in group work enthusiastically so participate in group work so participate is the action verb right and then psychomotor may be that you get them to prepare a poster right uh on functions of different parts of tree so maybe that you actually make it a jigsaw one so you put them into groups and one group will be doing uh the roots and the functions another group will be doing leaves and its functions like that and the trunk and its functions like that and then you can think of a way of putting them together save time right and very creative also 
and ultimately they will actually have that confidence i you we all actually contributed in some way it's a collective effort and all that so they all effective domain and psychomotor actually using hands and making a post and all that if not actually coming in front of the class and dramatizing different parts of the tree and it's talking about their functions and all that so like that you can get them to because we get them to do like that then they remember right rather than just read or teach explaining you get them to come in front of the class and do it though it's time because when they remember 90 percent of learn so that is one example so you actually don't have to put up just think and do i have given you the technique when you want to do something what is the technique thinking part is secondary comes let as the second part of it first is resourcing mukada pegita kiyanne resourcing koinda bada meko hoya ganna puluwa koinda meva kiya ganna puluwa nikan internet type karanna onne i will show you go to nie website nie kiyana kama ma danna wane the national institute of education maragama nie website can you go to the nie website i will show you right nie so you go to nie website and when you go to can you see what i am sharing am no. i no no ma no 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 give me a second right ah, i am here so nie website now you can see no yeah ma so i'm clicking on nie yeah and go to the nie website and you are directed to a new link okay because your internet connection is unstable up oh, always it's like that up all right all right here you go to nie website curricula under curricula you have syllabi you have teachers guide you have related resources lot of things right curricula so you go to teachers guide you go to syllabuses and all that read them so when you go there this is the primary section teachers guide in other medium select the teachers guide in english medium and go to grade 8 maybe so when you go to grade 8 find teachers guide of grade 8 grade 8 find teachers guide connection to the it's a connection issue right uh, my connection is not steady like that you can actually search okay no. uh, here you got yes, it can you give me now here these are the grade 8 grade 7 teachers guides what's the subject we'll go to science no. open no. science teachers guide grade 7 so this is resource right you don't just have to do that read resource collect information and come up with a nice work so i'm showing you how to do that it's worth doing because you are improving right there's no any other way that you can improve because i just gave you the framework of the theory this needs a lot of practice on your own right now now when you go to you can see that science yeah ma'am right now you can actually go to and read now your students will be able to use us microscope properly it's a very broad right it's a very broad for that actually to use the microscope properly little by little only that you are teaching them so students will be able to identify major parts of simple and compound microscopes so the eight periods so another lesson describe functions of different parts of a compound microscope like another lesson may be use the microscope properly observe plant and animal cells properly under the microscope express the terms magnification and resolution power explain the importance of using electron microscope in the field of biology a 
accept that the microscope should be handled carefully. Accept that the microscope should be handled carefully. Which domain? Affect your domain. Are you there? Yeah. Are you can uh, please? Accept the microscope should be handled carefully. Effective domain. Right? Can you find a psychomotor one here? In the list. Use the microscope properly. Use the microscope properly. Use the microscope properly. It's psychomotor. Accept that the side. So if you actually resource, make a quitter I'm if you are actually resourcing, then all our textbook lesson you have to go to the team, teacher's instructional manual and read it. And you have to go to the Bloom's wheel. Actually, find verbs. Shall we go to another one? Uh, here. Uh, right. Right. Here, learning outcomes of a lesson. Students will be able to state that food contains nutrients such as carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, vitamins, and minerals. State that food contains nutrients. Give examples of items of food rich in carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, vitamins, and minerals. Give examples of items. Conduct simple tests to identify starch, protein, and lipids. Accept that a balanced diet contains all nutrients needed in sufficient quantities. First one, what is the domain? Cognitive. Second one? Cognitive. Very good. Conduct simple tests. Third one? Psychomotor. Accept that a balanced diet contains all nutrients. Affecting. Very good. So, if you resource, this is not just doing that. You are resourcing. You are referring to the team. You are referring to the broom's wheel. You are referring to notes. You are referring to internet stuff. And, all. and then finally, you write your specific objectives. When you start, it will not be perfect, but you can actually master it while doing it. You get my point? So yes. I want every one of you to do some resourcing and bring me a small lesson with five specific objectives written under three domains and uh, Hello. Are you okay? I can't hear, madam. Again, tell me the question, madam. Yeah. Sorry? Can you speak louder, Puta? I can't follow you. We didn't hear, madam. Can you please take it again? Can you repeat? Can you please tell ah, it again? Maybe? You want me to explain it again? The question, right? This is homework and a must. There are 10 of you. All the 10 should do. Right? Can you hear me properly? I'm loud. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this is what you can do. You can think of a lesson of your choice. Science, maths, English, whatever. Right? And you can actually go to NIE website. I showed you NIE, National Institute of Education. Go to website and go to syllabuses, curriculums. And there you can find textbooks. You can find teachers' instructional manual manuals. That is what I showed you. That is like teacher guides. Syllabuses are there. Teacher guides are there. Textbooks are there. Right? Workbooks are there. So you can select a lesson from the textbook and you can refer to the teacher's guide of that particular grade and the subject. It's available. 
and then you can actually see what kind of specific objectives under the three domains and the smart way how you can do that. You can actually read something and do. You can just learn an active. Right? Then 10 of you are kind of talking about it. We have 10 examples. Am I right? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Only the specific objectives, nothing else. Right? Only the specific objectives, nothing else. So now it is almost 9 25. So another five minutes now. So we don't have uh, actually time for a new topic. But next day, I will actually get you to look at lesson planning. And we will be writing a lesson plan. We will be writing a lesson plan. So come prepared with paper and pen and paper and um, to write a lesson plan with me in the class. But before that, I want all the 10 of you, don't get absent just because that you couldn't do that, okay? Even if you don't do, you come. It's all right. I can't eat. No. So because of that, you're safe, right? Uh, anyway, make sure that you all do some resourcing and do that activity. Everyone will get two minutes. So we are going to spend 20 to 30 minutes on that because it's 10 examples that we're looking at. So you have to resource and do that. Is the task clear to you? Yeah. Right. So next day, uh, after getting you to actually present all the specific objectives uh, of your lessons, after leading a discussion, I'm spending half an hour on that. And then one and a half hours are there for us to actually write a lesson plan in the class. I will get you to write one um, science, uh, one history, and one English. Okay? I will get you to write one science, one English, one history. Because this is mixed one. Okay? Um, because of that. So, we will be writing a lesson plan. So, in those lesson plans also, the first step of writing a lesson plan is what? Deciding on the specific objectives. What is the first step of writing a lesson plan? I have to teach this lesson. So, what's the first step? Forming specific objectives. Once the specific objectives are formed, you can actually develop your lesson plan, thinking of the materials, thinking of the methods, thinking of the activities that you're going to do. Right? The first thing is uh, formulating the specific objectives for the lesson. So, another three minutes. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Hello, ma'am. Yeah. This Today's is Fatima. No, I am Dilini. Dilini. Dilini, madam. Hi, yes, Dilini. Hi, yes, Dilini. Hi, yes, Dilini. Today is my first Hi. day, ma'am. Hapa. <laughs> How come, they are Dilini? How come? So, <laughs> Dilini, where are you from? I'm from Matra, ma'am. Martha, are you a teacher? Yes, I'm an English teacher. So, uh, are you a product of Pasdunrata? No, ma'am. HND. HND. Right, it's okay. Yes. But this kind of... Uh, 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 these are not something new to you. You have done these in HND programs as well. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. We learned uh. Bloom's Taxonomy... Etc. Right, okay. So this is not something big for you. So you will be able to manage. But the thing is, uh, you have to be ready for your written examination. You have to be ready with the assignment. So assignment you have not done, no? Yes, ma'am. So what you can do is this. You have to actually get the institute to send you all the recordings and the lecture notes. Right? 
and you have to okay. listen to them and self study and then yes, you will be able I would... to do your assignment huh? i watch youtube videos right so, so then you understand did you, did you receive the assignment yes ma'am so you will be able to do the assignment no yes ma'am already i prepared but i couldn't upload ah. for the due date all ah, right right okay it's no problem because institute knows about your problem right so um it's no problem dilini if you work hard i think you can catch it up no yes ma'am okay then you didn't do psychology na no madam pedagogical psychology no not yet mm -hmm. for that also you have to listen to recordings yes ma'am uh, for do the assignment uh, i i watch only uh, education technology videos yeah yeah you finish this first right otherwise too much for you right you finish this first and keep in mind you have a presentation um and you have the written examination and every one of you listen your presentation for this subject would be i want you to actually write a lesson plan and present it to the class. So oh, once, yes. right, that will be the oral assessment. I will get you to write a lesson plan. I will get you to share the lesson plan and explain how we are going to do that with the rationale. You know, reflection and all that. Once we complete the lesson plan, it's very easily that you can present it. That will be your uh, actually um, uh, presentation. Uh, that will be actually towards the end. Excuse me, madam. Right. Yeah. Uh, presentation in the sense that means we, we have to teach. Isn't it? You don't have to teach for that. No, 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 no. You don't have to teach. You have to present your lesson plan. I have planned this lesson for grade six students. It's a science lesson. It's the unit two and uh, like that. And um, uh, I, I actually, these are my specific objectives for the 40 minute lesson. And uh, these specific objectives, these are from cognitive, these are from affective, these are from psychomotor. And these are the teaching learning materials that I'm going to use. And then you have to show the teaching learning materials. So, lesson planning, you all to explain it to me after writing the lesson plan. Is there any time duration, ma'am, to present the lesson plan? That, of course, I have to decide later on. I will ask from the institution whether they can actually set me, give me some more hours for that. If not, I have to limit it. Otherwise, normally a presentation is for 10 to 15 minutes. I will give you all the instructions before I get you to do that. Keep that in mind. It will be something like that. Okay? Hmm. Okay, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, sir. We have a like that. Sorry? We have what like that assignment before this. Is this also same as like that? Lesson okay. plan assignment. We have what something like that. Yeah. Make a lesson plan. Didn't you send an assignment like that? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I have done like that one. Where? In which module? That is motivational learning mode. No, not, okay. not that one. Wait, wait, I'll check it. So have you have you done lesson planning with uh, some other lecture? No, I'm not. I think uh, she asked about the flipped classroom lesson plan, madam. Uh, In the flipped classroom, you don't have to do a lesson plan. It's only the activities, right? In the flipped method, that assignment, I have not done uh, lesson planning yet. No, it's only preparation of activities, lot activities and hot activities. Am I right? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Yes, like that one. Yeah. yeah, in that yeah. they have asked us to describe no describe what we are going to do. Yeah. 
uh, that's what she thought it was it, so, it, it, it has nothing to do with lesson planning lesson planning is totally different and i have not taught it to you i have something i have to teach and then only that i can set an assignment no? now explain means the steps of conducting flipped method okay ma'am steps ma explain the steps of conducting the flip method that is what i have asked there right not the lesson plan okay okay ma i have asked you to explain how you are going to conduct it so then you are going to send them uh, materials and activities lot activities and you will give them feedback and then get them to come to class and then you get them to be in groups and pairs and conduct these hot activities and what are those hot activities how you are going to conduct this flip it's not a lesson plan actually because mm -hmm. something that i have not done i can't set an assignment like that no i never expected you to you you wrote a lesson plan there No, I just write the steps. What I'm I going to do. Steps of conducting the flip method. That is what but I asked. I didn't put the step, ma'am. I didn't put the step one number one like that. I didn't put. Just no, no. I, I actually do. No, men. Ahem, I kill an air. You don't have to number the steps. You have to explain, describe how we are going to conduct it. So okay. that means, okay, it's, you can do it either way. You can actually write number one, two, three, four like that. If not, you can explain. This is how I'm going to uh, conduct this. Kela, ek specific objectives what lesson plan will have components, but nothing is there. It's only activities, mm -hmm. right? Right. You have got it. Mix up the kela mam me kalpana karano. Right. It's okay. No problem. Right. Um. I will only look at the activities. You can. It's clearly asked. What are the activity skill? So I will give marks accordingly. And word count, number of words, that is a must. Because cut and paste work. Why, why? No, there won't be. That means a word limit. I don't think there may be uh, 300 or 400. I just write it. Oh, that is very wrong, but I will not cut a lot of marks for that. But remember, in doing an assignment, there's a word count given. Why? Otherwise, it's all cut and paste. All cut and paste from internet, pages and pages. Internet is there for you to resource, read, collect information, and you have to do your own writing. And first draft is never the final draft. Maybe when you write the first draft, thousand words. But you have to actually reduce the number of words for that. You know, revising, 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 editing. They are skills, actually, right? They are skills. Those are the purposes. Otherwise, what's the point of giving you a take-home assignment uh, in this age of internet and uh, chat GPT, right? But we have our own ways of not getting you to cut and paste. You can resource, read them, collect information, and you have to work on your own. Exactly. That is actually why the word counts and guidelines and all these things are there. Amen. So they are very important. Yeah. Right? right? Hello, madam. Yeah. Yes. Madam, see, will you, I have prepared it like a lesson plan, actually. Uh, Sulochana, the. Yes, madam. Because no, anyway. You... Anyway, it's all right. If you prepared it as a lesson plan, I will see, the, look at only the activities. But some marks will be deducted because addressing a question. You're not a small child. Right? Shall I, now, yeah? Shall I prepare another assignment and send you then? Yeah, yeah. Please do so. Okay, and in that you can say, uh, uh, kind of ignore the previous one. Okay, this is the proper oh. killer. You have to stay. It. Okay, madam. I will, because you have to work till I have not done lesson planning yet. So how can you can I ask you to write a lesson plan? I lesson plan not. is not it's different from the activity given. Okay, now you can correct the mistake. Okay. Thank you, madam. Right, okay. And uh, then shall we 
wind up okay ma'am okay then thank you very much everyone of you see you next good week night, wednesday 7:30 okay good night ma'am thank you thank you okay, so much ma'am good, good night yeah good night bye 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 bye